All right, guys, this is my first members only video. Um, I don't want to say this is a stock pick, but it's a stock I've bought and one that I'm kind of presenting to you. Uh, I'll talk about it from like how what I entered and you can see that right here. It's DLO. It's D local. Uh, it's a play on kind of Latin America, Africa, parts of Asia, not so much China focused, which is good in my opinion. And, um, and we'll talk about my entry. We'll talk about the financials. We'll talk about some of the fundamentals behind it. Uh, we'll talk about, you know, we'll go through the options calculator and look at open interest volumes, all the things. Uh, but this will be for members only. And I think my members only videos, when I initially get into these, um, I will not change those. Those will stay as members only. I might make follow-up ones later, maybe weeks or months later, that talk to these. And in my market recap, people will see the line for the stock D local. Um, or DLO. I won't show them the options though, because I don't want to do that. I, I want to give I want to give members the opportunity to enter, especially if I'm talking about options plays. And you make the decision. This one has um, I like the 35s. They didn't have the highest amount of open interest and volume, but I find that as I usually add to plays like this, if I really like what I'm looking at, that I end up creating some of that interest and in, uh, open interest and volume. So I'm okay with the fact that it's a little bit lower. I got it at what I believe is a really good price. Um, so we'll show you some of that a little bit later here. But but um, let me show you the chart and then I'll kind of talk to what they do. Actually, that's probably backwards. Let's do this. Let's talk to what they do. So this company is a payment processor. They've got relationships with a lot of major companies around the world. Focused, again, um, I'll go back over here, coverage. A lot of Africa, as you can see here. Asia, a lot of uh, company, uh, countries that are going to do well from China's demise, like I believe the Philippines, India, um, uh, Thailand, maybe, uh, I mean, Vietnam, Bangladesh, all these, there's a lot of these countries are, are benefiting from, from their demise. And then Latin America is just amazing. Like that's a great space to be in. So I like all of that. I like the fact that that um, we're looking at a company that has, you know, they try and simplify things. They've got one API, 600 plus merchants, 900 different payment methods, 800 plus team members, and they're in 40 different countries. Not a lot of overhead on this one. Um, I like a lot of that. Also, I, I just wanted to show you this too. So this compares, um, it says, sustain strong revenue momentum in our largest region driven by Brazil and, and Mexico. I love that. I love that if you look here by the millions, you can see a lot of their money and they're going to have earnings on Monday for these guys. It's coming real quick. Normally, I don't buy this close to earnings, but I don't think, I don't think there's a lot of money pumping earnings right now for this company because it's not being paid attention to too much. But I love that 136 million in Q Q3 of 2023 was coming out of Latin America and that um, Asia represented a much smaller piece of that pie. Uh, it actually went down a little bit. And again, I think I, I don't know how much in, uh, how much they have in China, but that's probably not great. Africa could maybe be taking a hit, but I do think Africa after Latin America might be an interesting play. It might just take longer, but I think that that's an interesting space to be into. Um, and and again, I love other parts of Asia, not China. So so I like this from all of that, from that standpoint, right? And uh, let me go back here real quick. So from a stock standpoint, they've been really beat up. In 2021 um, was their peak. And then shortly thereafter, they just got crushed and uh, they were down a lot. They're only down 75, I say only down 75, 76% right now, but they were down um, 87. Now, what I like about this from a technical standpoint is, so so A, it's went up a lot. So it could short do a short retrace. Again, this is kind of, I did a starter position. For me, this is like less than a percent. It's probably like, I don't know, point two. It's a small amount. It's a small amount of money, right? Like it's really tiny amount of money. Keep that in mind. Um, and I'm okay if they retrace. I actually kind of hope they do. As long as I see good fundamentals, I'm happy. Mean reversion from a technical standpoint is actually like to the 33 range, which is a 90% increase. Not a huge amount. Not a huge amount for a stock that could be growing by a lot because of Latin America. And I'll show you something in a second that kind of speaks to that. I also love this gap on the left. The dot 618 is the golden retracement zone. So I probably wouldn't hold options on this much past 48. I'd probably be out unless the fundamentals are accelerating. Um, but even then, I probably wouldn't have a lot of my options left. But I love this gap over here on the left on the daily time frame. Um, that's up 153% from where we're at or around the 45 range, which is a great number. I know it might sound like a lot to be asking for 150%. 
um, over a period of what I'm shooting for is a year and a half. The option is almost two years. Um, it's January 2026. But really, I don't like to hold that last three months because of um, extrinsic value just gets crushed. And I like to get a little bit of that too because that's a premium, right? We want that. So I, I would not want to hold this much past a year and a half. I'm hoping it happens within a year this year. But uh, again, so that's kind of my... That's kind of my exit plan. This is kind of how I look at it from an over, uh, undervalued st standpoint. Also, uh, Peru. I like Peru. He's not always right, but he is smart. Um, and I think New is an interesting one. Malay is maybe interesting. Maybe that's something I look at in the future and do a video on. But Latin e-commerce is projected to double in three years. So we're looking at a doubling, and this is probably one of the leaders in that space. And again, I've got the stock up on the left here. You can kind of see it's already up 2% today. And so I think that if these guys do well and execute well, we could see a growth rate that would get them, you know, 100% or more in the next two years while I have these contracts. And um, that would be a big deal if they can, if they can keep, if they can, ex if they can accelerate or keep similar growth to what they have and we can get that kind of growth, I think, I think, you know, getting back to this level, or at least, you know, in the 30s is pretty high. And so we'll look at the options chain for that in a second. That's kind of my thought process on it. Um, we could cover more in here. Again, um, had a little bit of a slowdown driven by Asian markets getting crushed a little bit. Let me adjust this. Robust network of trusted par financial partners. Um, again, I, these guys, the relationships they have, look up their Q3 earnings they're good. I'm not going to focus too much on this right now, though, um, because I'm probably going to cover their their earnings uh, for members on Monday. So I'm not going to focus a lot on rehashing a lot of this. I'm just showing you the play mainly right now. So um, oh, let me kill this. You don't need to see that. So let's go back over here. So let's look at it from a financial standpoint, okay? Last year, revenue growth, 47%. So again, do you see why I don't think it's crazy in the next two years for this thing to, to, to double um, and and if you're getting 47%, you know, year over year, and you do that close to twice, um, you're there. And uh, they're buying back shares. I love that. Expenses haven't really increased a lot. I like that. Huge cash position, no debt. Cash flow took a little bit of a hit in Q3. Again, Asia seems to be the problem. I don't know all the details with it. I'm going to try and listen to the conference call. Haven't done that yet. Again, this is just a starter position. But after Monday, I'll have a really good beat on what I, what I think of this company. Now, again, look at these projections for growth. They're so nice. EPS, revenue, all that, right? Um, ratio per employee, they're like nearing 650, 700,000 in revenue per employee. And that number just looks like it's accelerating. Uh, PE ratio has fallen off a cliff since 2021. Um, again, you're just seeing kind of the operating leverage. It tabled off a little bit. But remember, they're seasonal. Q4 should be a good one. So we could see an increase here. Stock-based comp is not crazy. 2% of holdings. Looks like they got a lot of that when they initially, you know, debuted in the 20s, 2020 range. So, I, but I like this gap. I like seeing this kind of expansion. I like that a lot. I don't know. I might even buy a little more of this stock um, or the options, I should say, after I'm done making the video and when I go to publish. We'll see. Um Short interest, 4.32. I don't know why anybody would be short this. They must just be betting against um, economic downturn in the world and thinking that Latin America and Asia and these other areas would get hit the worst. And they probably would take a hit. Um, they would take a hit. So if that's the bet, then that's probably why this short interest exists. Otherwise, a lot of the institutions in here, very little retail. A lot of inside, a decent amount of insider, 11%. Nothing crazy, though, honestly. But again, this PE, kind of getting it at a premium at 39. But if the growth is anything like this or accelerates at some point, I don't know if that's crazy. And again, it, this is a much cheaper company where it's at right now at the 17 range than when people were buying it at 74. So you can see if we if things play out in the markets the way I think they're, they are for this year, where we global liquidity continues to increase and expand, then this probably isn't a crazy deal. This probably isn't a bad deal at all. So, so again, this is kind of the play. Um, this is kind of the play. E-commerce, uh, a lot of focus in in uh, in Brazil and Mexico right now. Kind of reminds me of the new play with the banking side. 
uh, just a steady eddy, fast drawer. The only difference on this one is it's still a lot more beat down. And again, it's revenues and like net income. What are we pulling in? 40 million, 40 million on a $5 billion company. That's eh, all right. But I do expect this to be over a hundred million soon. And so I think it's going to work its way into its forward PE. Um, and I think that it's going to look better and better and fire off even more. Uh, in the months ahead. That's the bet. And that's what I'll kind of confirm here soon. Now we should, let's go over to the options. So the options chain, let me show you all of it. Oh, here, let me get on it real quick. I'll have to refresh one second. I'll show you which one I picked. And again, it's like at the max extreme. And then we'll talk to like my targets again and jump back and forth and kind of look back and forth at them. So January, 2026, I'm at the pick tippity top, right? And the last is 150, it says for it right now. So I shot it up a little bit. Oh, what did we just do? We jumped out of something. I must have clicked ahead. So this thing is sitting at a little bit more of a premium than it was. Uh, but I like the multiplier behind it. Ah, now I got to do it again. I kind of, if somebody has one that they prefer for options chains outside of the NASDAQ, let me know because I get a little annoyed by this one. So the bid and ask are 140 and 170. I've already pushed this thing up a little bit today. You can see how the volumes went up. Oh my God, I can't click on anything or it gets effed. Let me go on one more time and then I will not click on anything. Okay, so you can see how I, I jacked this up already with my purchase. So you probably wanna, again, I don't know if you wanna wait or if you wanna look at a different chain. Run the op options calculator against others. I liked this entry better. And the 35 is closer to my ultimate target, which is why I chose it too. So if we go back here, um, I'm saying I think we can mean revert up to this range, which is around 33, 34. And, uh, and I think that that's a pretty easy play in the next year and a half. So that's why I chose this one, because even though it's way out on the curve here for the options chain, I think it's closest to my target on what I'm trying to hit. And like I said, sometimes if you're kind of a noob in here, I could create more open interest just by my volumes creeping up if I continue to add to this thing. So maybe I'll end up getting the open interest a little bit more where towards our liking. <laughs> but um, but I might have overpaid. I don't know. Here's what I'll let me show you it, right? Let me show you what I got. So I got 50 contracts. I spent $7,500 on them. Again, January 2026, 35. Now, if we get towards that $33 range, let's say just even this year, I make a decent amount off of this. And I'm gonna lower this because again, things can go down. They don't have to go up, right? You need to remember that there's red. If you never change this, you might not see how it, this curve, and this is a decent curve. So this is one where if it's not going in the direction I need it to, um, my gains start to disappear. So I need a lot of upside. I need to get to 33, but if I do that, let's say by November, so I'm giving myself a lot of time for this to play out, right? Or let's just say January, um, so that way I have a decent, you know, Q4 uh, for these guys this next next year, um, Q4 for 2024, and then you know January of 2025. If this thing goes up 86%, I make 367. So this is a four bagger, but if the company did really well, and let's say by like January March. Um, or let's just say June of 2025, um, we start to see the company doing really well. 171% gets me 973. So again, um, it's about a four bagger. If it happens sooner, it's a little bit better. Maybe it's pushing to five. So it's about a four to five X play if it hits the targets I'm looking at. I sometimes like a number that's better than that, but I want some more Latin American exposure. Um, and again, a little bit of India, a little bit of that the Asian region that I like outside of China. Um, and I also want some in Africa. So I kind of, I like the fact of where this is going. It's a starter position. If they get crushed on earnings, um, I'm probably going to look to add to it. But again, um, use the optionsprofitcalculator.com to figure the numbers. Maybe 30 is a better number. Just all depends. I'm trying to teach people to fish here. So please... Take the time to try and look at this stuff yourself, okay? Um, pull up the, prop, the, the the calculator. Pull up the options chain. If you have a better one that has less ads, great. Um, and 20 is like, I think 20 is easy money, but the multiplier isn't as great. You're getting like a 2x maybe instead of four. 
So um, it is what it is, right? But huge open interest in that. So a lot of people seem to love that one. I think that could creep to 30 and then even maybe 35 here uh, if the numbers keep playing out well. Um, and again, check out Visual Stocks with a Z instead of an S for visual. Uh, it's a great site. I don't get any money from this. I don't get any kind of incentive whatsoever. But I love looking at this, finding news articles, um, looking at the visual data quickly and easily. You can add additional charts. You can pull up earnings stuff. I'd better follow this one, so I follow earnings. But like, there's just a lot of good stuff on this that I think you can benefit from. But this this is the play. Um, again, look it up yourself. Uh, I'll be doing earnings for these guys on Monday. I don't know if they're before or after the bell, but I'll 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 post something about it. And if if Latin America is truly doubling in three years, and these guys are going to be a beneficiary of that. Um, I think this could be quite the turnaround story from their 75% drop from where they're at right now. Um, and I'm looking forward to learning more about the company as a team here. If you have more about it, if you have risks um, that you're concerned about with this company or things that I'm missing that are like key beneficial pieces, I'm just getting started with this. So throw them in the comments. Um, or, or if you have sites I should be referencing, throw that stuff in the comments. I'd be happy to take a look here. And I might. It looks like it's dropped. It's only at 1.7%. I might buy a little more of these guys. We'll see. We'll see. But anyway, um, I digress. So this is the video. Uh, I'll try and do probably even more thorough analysis in future ones. I might only do like one of these a week. Or if there's not, if I can't find anything good, I might not do any at all. Um, I'm also working on hedge plays. I just don't know. I really do think that short-term Bitcoin is probably the best hedge. So I've been reluctant to do a, a good hedge video, um, and I've done one already. I did one on, I did one on a hedging strategy. Just look up hedge, or hedging uh, on my YouTube videos. I did one about Starbucks and Best Buy. I still feel very confident about those, and I have a little over fifty thousand in them. So check those out if you're looking for some that are already already out there. And then I've got some other ones that I'm looking at, but I don't really want to. I want to get. I want to do this stuff around the right time. I don't want people to get in too early on something that I don't believe they should be early on, because options aren't great with that. They can be painful. So I I'm trying to get it to where I'm just a little bit early. Um, like again, I made that mistake with PayPal and SoFi and and uh, and Square and Hood. Um, I was telling people about these plays in June and July of last year. Actually, maybe even May. And uh, it was too soon, right? It was too soon. I was just excited. Uh, market was propelling in the right direction. Probably would have been smarter to be more cautious and wait and maybe have done that in like Q4 um, or even late Q3 uh, because people would have got better entries. And some, I mean, people doing it now are getting great entries, right? People, there's people that are up a thousand percent on hood from some of the, from some of the, you know, videos I've made and the fact that they've got in more recently. But I'm trying to get it to where hopefully, and I can't guarantee anything, not a financial advisor, <laughs> I'm not God, I'm just trying to figure stuff out, but hopefully I'm, I'm trying to get better at getting these things closer to where I believe the timing is going to be more beneficial instead of um, getting people in too early. Not that I have the power to do that, legal disclaimers, yada, yada, yada. I just want to be a good guide for people. Um, I don't. I, there's risk, especially in options, guys. Options are so risky. Um, and don't necessarily just buy, I say this all the time, don't just buy the stuff I put in these videos. Um, at the end of this, I'll put my Options 101 video. Watch that. Um, it's very important that you guys understand how options work. It's very under important that you understand risk. I'll throw the hedging one in there too, on the, to the further to the right. But just, you know, do your own research. Think for yourself. Use this as educational content to to learn the process that I use to be able to determine value um, and and maybe your own caveats maybe you could do it better um, but ju don't just jump into the options plays this one is not it's not a Tesla where what I say doesn't really matter and I won't move the options that much at all if any um, this is smaller and so again I move the options with my purchase <laughs> so just be cautious if you want to be really conservative, maybe just look at a stock play if you're interested in it. I always start small and then I learn as much as I can along the way. But I find that getting a little bit in gives me that incentive 
to educate myself more and and to better understand. You gotta like have some money in the game to really care about it, right? So anyway, that's my diatribe for today. Uh, 20 minutes, a little bit better than normal. Uh, let me know what you guys think. Again, uh, like, subscribe, ring the bell, um, and please uh, you know comment down below because it does help the video. Even though this is members only, I want people to see it. Um, but thank you guys. Love you. Talk to you later. Bye.